Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about microservices. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are your thoughts on building microservices? Well, if I didn't know any better, I would suspect that this was one of the questions that you asked me to help me raise the relevancy of my content. And if that is the case, thank you so much. Uh, because I think that this is probably the most discussed topic on well, one of the biggest topics, at the very least, uh, in IT. So, the first thing I have to say about microservices is that unless you have a very good understanding and quite a lot of experience when it comes to dealing with distributed systems, and not just the system itself, but the development process and how to set up the work process around a distributed system, don't use microservices. Because it is the most complicated architecture that you could possibly use if you're in, especially if you're inexperienced. You're gonna fuck it up. I promise you, you're gonna fuck it up. Or at the very least, you're going to create a situation where you th you're actually slowing yourself down, and in many cases, un in an unnecessary fashion. Microservices have a very they they have a very strong use case. I just want you to understand that microservices does not equal success. It is the execution of how uh, how you do the work that is going to give you success. And just as with a monolith, there are trade-offs. There's no such thing as a free lunch. A monolithic application has many benefits, especially at small scale, that are extremely useful and creates a lot of value for a company. But And microservices have the same thing. It's just that you need to understand what the trade-offs are. And I, you I mean, if I had a dollar for every single damn Junior, junior developer comes in and tells me that we should migrate to, my, uh, to microservices, I would be a very rich man. And whenever I ask them the most simple question, okay, cool, so now we have a distributed system where everything's kind of con connecting over several nodes within the network, and uh, could you just tell me, how are we going to deal with model consistencies between the services? How are we going to ship one of, say, a hundred microservices and be f feel confident that we didn't introduce a breaking change into the system? And there are more questions that I could. I usually I can just go through the questions until they stop you know, giving me answers that make any sense. Because you should. I mean, even the really enthusiastic ones kind of go, "Well, we'll just have to do be really good with unit testing." Yeah, sure. That sounds like a very sustainable strategy that we'll just be better programmers than we are. That's that's definitely the way to go here. I, it, this is the thing. You, I, to this day, I've never really met a software developer who has. It's extremely rare that rather you f that you find software developers who um, who realize the downsides of using microservices. Now. That's not a deal breaker for you, the downsides. It's just that you have to be aware of them because it's like you're buying into something you don't even understand. You don't understand the impact. You're just regurgitating what the tech talker said in terms of benefits. Those benefits are there, but you have to understand the trade-off. So I'll give you a few tips and tricks that are in no way going to be everything because there's a lot of more stuff that you could learn, but I'll give you the things that I've used in order to make these sorts of things work. Uh, for me and my companies or the companies that I've worked for that has actually leveraged microservices. So, tip number one, try, if at all possible, to use a monorepo. Now, the reason, the reason why I want you to do that is because one of the biggest challenges you have with a distributed system, which is one of the benefits of having a monolith, is that model sharing is a problem. It is a problem for you to have like all these different, because you're connecting over multiple services, but these services, they have dependencies like they are dependencies on each other. And if you have a monolithic application, you can reference the same model, like because everything is in the same code base. But in, if you are in a distributed system, you have multiple services that connect over HTTP, usually, or TCP connection or something like that. And you need to have that code in both places. And this needs to be in sync. This is the problem with, with um, API consistency, because if you change one of the models in service A, well, that's gonna break in service B. And you have to be damn sure that you are aware of that. If you have a monorepo, and especially if you have a compiled language, that is a v it's much easier for you to deal with that because if you have two separate repositories and you change something in product A, well, if you don't remember that product B as a dependency, that's gonna be a problem. But if you are in a monorepo, 
at the least the compiler will tell you that oh you created a compilation issue in one of the other projects and you can still segment things like you can still create your own pipelines and all that stuff which is a very good thing so overall I think I'm on replay is a very good thing for you if you're going to do microservices to start off with there are uh, th th I would say th th I'm oversimplifying this I mean I could make an entire book or an entire series about every segment of this somewhere but since I can't sit here and take up all, all your time or you're gonna have to kind of skip through to the next thing so monorepos good 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 thing if you're gonna do microservices second thing that I really think that you should consider is uh, contract testing what is that well so one of the problems that you're gonna face with microservices is the as I was saying the the problem of intercommunication between services you're not going to be able to guarantee if you have 50 or 100 like you, you don't even have to have 50 if it, you have 20 10 that doesn't really matter if you have a number of services that is large enough that you cannot keep all the services in your head at the one time it's impossible for you to know if you did something that broke it's extremely easy to create the breaking change in the APIs because as you can imagine if you have if you change something in service A that breaks in service B well unless they're part of the same testing strategy or you have some way of verifying that the 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 expected communication between the two uh, is working you're kind of fucked and that's where contract based testing comes in so each service should provide a ideally an open API spec or some way of asserting that the interface is working and there are many tools for that uh, where you can write tests basically that's what you need to do you need to make sure that each service that is consuming another service or like connecting to another service that they have a suite of tests that are going to run against that service so that whenever you deploy something that uh, a new service everybody who's depending on that service they should be uh, they should never have to worry that you introduce the breaking change that is one of the things that is really really difficult with mic microservices because when you want to make a breaking change well you don't you shouldn't ideally do that well you need to know about it and that's where contract based testing really is the best thing ever because it, it tests the api it's make sure it, it's going to make sure that you didn't in, in some way introduce a change that is going to break for some external service that is depending on your system. So that's number two. Make sure that you're doing that. Number three, uh, I would say, is take a look at tools such as, say, telepresence and so forth, and very much consider to have a a hybrid workstation solution where you provide your your developers with a work environment where they could run their services for perhaps on their laptop and then they should have an environment where they can have a production like environment where the other services are running because uh, your lap your workstation is a workstation is not going to be able especially in a big distributed system uh, it's going to be hard for you to run all your services with associated databases and like all that stuff uh, in the same environment so it's extremely convenient as a work process to be able to run this like run the code that you are going to test on your laptop and then connect to the cloud or whatever where you have all the other services for the other teams running just ready that is an extremely nice work experience when you're dealing with microservices so a tool such as kubernetes or similar sorts of tools are i would say almost a demand for you to make this a success whatsoever and then lastly, really think about your communication channels between the services. And I know this is, I, guess, I still can, I can go on. I can go on and give you more tips. But what I mean by the communication channels, basically what I'm saying is that you need to think about how services are going to talk to each other. Now, my favorite pattern for this, and I can go in, I, there are many strategies for this is to have some to have to a two-step process because you're going to have to divide the communication into two things things that needs to happen synchronously and things that needs to happen asynchronously the easiest way for you to deal with synchronous communication in my opinion is to pr to create a to add a reverse proxy um, or something like that a, a gateway where you have something like say nginx or ha proxy or similar sorts of things where all the services are talking to say nginx 
to get to the other services. So they don't have to be aware of each other. Now that is, we can discuss that architecture, but it is in a very easy and effective way and it's going to scale up to quite a hefty size, not to the size of say Google. But if you're investing in service meshes and like the side card patterns and so forth, you're very quickly getting into a very complicated situation if you want to talk about say authentication and so forth, because authentication and if you're, if you're dealing with security issues and so forth, it's so much easier to just have a, a an Nginx instance that is responsible for the secure communication between your services than it is to, uh, to have one of those instances versus having like one per every service or per like uh, per group of services it becomes much more complicated very quickly so that is a very good thing for synchronous communication that way all the services they don't need to talk to know about each other they just need to know how to get to Nginx and Nginx is going to proxy them to the correct service which is a very useful thing and then the last part is uh, asynchronous communication. You need to think about message dispatching and having a message queue of some sort because there are, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you don't want all your communication to be synchronous. In some cases you just want to send out events to other services to explain that something happened within the system. That is a very effective uh, overall communication strategy and it's extremely simplified. So what I want you to take away from this is number one, microservices are extremely complicated to do correctly and it is I would say high it's it, it should not be your default know what you're doing before you're getting into it because it is complicated monolithic applications every single day of the week for junior and mid levels or like it, practically every company who isn't like who has the need to do microservices should start out there and will grow into microservices second thing is first and foremost consider using a monorepo monorepos are great for microservices and so forth to keep things consistent and to like you make sure that people can do code sharing effectively number two use contract based testing it is extremely important that you can feel secure in that deploying a new service that it didn't break the contract it has with the other services third make sure that you are investing in uh, something like telepresence or so you have some idea of how you're going to deal with all these services because when you're doing doing your work it's extremely hard that you can't run a hundred services on your laptops you need to think about that so create work environments for your developers where they can use something like telepresence which i think is a pretty good tool for that uh, to run their services that they're working on on their laptop and then the rest of the infrastructure or like w the rest of the environment of services can run in the cloud and they can communicate independ uh, communicate uh, seamlessly. Fourth and last, uh, think about the communication ch channels between the services. It's extremely important that you have an idea of how are they going to talk to each other because if they do direct calls to each other, well that's going to work if you have two or three or four services, but as you have 50 or 100 it becomes very complicated, especially from a security perspective. My personal favorite is create just create the gateway, uh, create a communication gateway where you have like an Nginx instance that ca takes care of all the security aspects and the communication between the services. They talk to Nginx. Nginx proxies them to whatever service that they're trying to attach themselves to or connect to. That's for synchronous communication. Asynchronous communication, invest in a message queue so that you can dispatch messages and have them published to whatever services are depending on them. This is in a very simplified version of all the things that you could think about, but these are just some, some tips that I think that you should take with you. Have a great day.